Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll discuss about a person whose enemy is air. Well, don't be surprised, keep watching. Here is our MCQ. A 60-year-old man with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, presents the emergency department with sudden onset shortness of breath. He has a respiratory rate of 24 breaths per minute. His saturation is 92 on Romeo. A 4cm right-sided pneumothorax is diagnosed on the plain chest x-ray. We asked about what is the most appropriate management. A. Discharge home if there is no deterioration over a 4-hour period with return next day with a repeat chest x-ray. B. High flow oxygen therapy and close observation in a monitored area. C. Simple needle aspiration of the pneumothorax with the 16 gauge or 18 gauge cannula. D. Emergency needle decompression on the right side. E. Insertion of an intercostal chest drain on the right side. So, as you are now much familiar with our MCQ pattern, first we will identify the main keywords in this MCQ. Here I have highlighted the main keywords. He is a 60 year old man with COPD, sudden onset shortness of breath, respiratory rate of 24 breaths per minute, which is not so bad. Saturation is 92% on room air. Remember, this is a patient with COPD. 4 cm right sided pneumothorax. We asked about most appropriate management is. So, this is type of a question that you have faced during your medical school time. It's not really a difficult one, but a bit tricky. Please remember, the main name of acute treatment of pneumothorax is to rule out tension pneumothorax, which is fatal, and to relieve any dyspnea. And dividing the pneumothorax into large or small plays an important role in the management recommendation. But unfortunately, the definition of what constitutes a large or small, it differs between published guidelines. The British Thoracic Society definition of large pneumothorax is more than 2 cm measurement from the lung margin to chest wall at the level of the hilum. Meanwhile, American College of Chest Physicians definition of large pneumothorax is equal or more than to 3 cm from the lung apex to the thoracic cupola. If you are not clear, this diagram will further illustrate it. This is American guidelines, that is the distance from apex to the cupola. And this is distance B, interpleural distance at level of the hilum and this is according to the British guidelines. Keep in mind uh, about these differences also. So this guy, this flowchart is our ultimate savior of this MCQ and it gives a good comprehensive idea about management of spontaneous pneumothorax. Spontaneous pneumothorax, there are two types as I told you previously, secondary spontaneous pneumothorax and primary spontaneous pneumothorax. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax, it occurs in patients with no evidence of other underlying lung disease. And in contrast, secondary pneumothorax usually occurs in patients with underlying lung disease, most commonly COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And it, it is very important to make this fundamental distinction because pneumothorax in COPD patients is much less well tolerated by the patient and it tends to respond less to management interventions. It is because the underlying lung disease requires appropriate treatment in addition. And here we'll begin with this flowchart. First, here is spontaneous pneumothorax. And here it says if bilateral or hemodynamically unstable, proceed to chest drain directly. And then we are coming here. Age is more than 50 and significant smoking history or evidence of underlying lung disease on examination or chest x-ray. So we'll go according to our case scenario. And our patient is 60 years old and having COPD. So, detection is this way, yes. And then he is having a secondary pneumothorax. Then come to a junction whether the size of the pneumothorax is more than 2 cm or patient is breathless. And our size is 4 cm. So, I am going this direction, yes. And here, 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 here. And ultimately, we come to the point chest drain and admit. Again to the beginning, if the size is less than 2 cm and then we are come to a junction with the size is 1 to 2 cm. If no, that means less than 1 cm, then the option is admit high flow oxygen and observe for 24 hours. If the size is between 1 to 2 cm, yes, then this direction, aspirate using 18 to 16 gauge cannula and if it becomes success, size is now reduced to less than 1 cm and then we can give high flow oxygen and observe for 24 hours. And if the patient is not more than aged 50 years and there is no underlying lung disease, we are going this direction, no, 
then is a primary spontaneous pneumothorax then again we are asked about the size more than 2 cm or breathless if yes aspirate with 16 to 18 gauge cannula this one and if no we are coming here consider discharge and review in OPD in 2 to 4 weeks this option so I think you can go through this flow chart leisurely this one is issued by the British Thoracic Society guidelines and I think it's really really important because you can cover many many MCQ points through this flow chart so a little bit about management of spontaneous secondary pneumothorax according to British Thoracic Society guidelines or oh, it says like all patients with secondary spontaneous pneumothorax should be admitted to hospital for at least 24 hours and receive supplemental oxygen in compliance with the BTC guidelines on the use of oxygen. Most patients will require insertion of a small bore chest drain. All patients will require early referral to a chest physician and those with a persistent air leak should be discussed with the thoracic surgeon at 48 hours. So coming back to our MCQ. Keep in mind that secondary spontaneous pneumothorax is less likely to be tolerated by patients than primary spontaneous pneumothorax because of co-existing lung disease. Our first answer is discharge home and keep in mind that air leak is less likely to settle spontaneously so that most patients will require active intervention. And then high flow oxygen therapy. Yes, oxygen is indicated but caution is required for patients with carbon dioxide retention. This answer is correct but it's not the most appropriate management option. And simple needle aspiration, it is less likely to be successful in secondary spontaneous pneumothorax but can be considered in symptomatic patients with small pneumothorax in an attempt to avoid chest brain insertion. So emergency needle decompression on the right side, it's not the most appropriate management option for this patient. So the best answer here is and according to the previous flowchart, insertion of an intercostal chest drain on the right side. And also keep in mind that early referral to a chest physician is encouraged for all patients with secondary spontaneous pneumothorax, both for the management of the pneumothorax and also for underlying lung disease. And those with a persistent air leak should be discussed with thoracic surgeon after 48 hours. So that's our MCQ. Keep in mind that first you should differentiate between primary spontaneous pneumothorax and secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. And secondary spontaneous pneumothorax needs active intervention. And according to size of pneumothorax, the management options vary as like in our previous flow chart. And then according to size of pneumothorax, you can manage accordingly. So I want to emphasize here, please go through the flow chart again and make sure you know it thoroughly so that you can answer any MCQ which comes from the pneumothorax and other case scenarios like this. So make sure you read around the topic much more because I'm not going to explain it more here. I hope this MCQ is useful to you and if you find it useful please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss any important MCQ from me. Thank you and let's meet from another important question like this.